here, coming back with the second episode of our custom rendered block. To be honest, I actually recorded this video last night, and it topped out in about 40 minutes, and it was a mess. I was a mess. Um, it was just terrible. It was awful. So I'm redoing it right now. I'm going to split it into two this time because 40 minutes is a long time. And there are a lot of different components in here. Uh, so it's probably the best. So, yesterday we created our model, right? Um, we exported our model into right yeah. We've got our obsidian table and our obsidian table PNG. One of the things that I actually did in that episode was I renamed this to model obsidian table. So whatever you've created, if you've already exported your Java file, go ahead and do that. Um, and that actually makes me think I need to get rid of this. Right, y'all. Right, so go ahead and rename that. Um, I'm going to try to do my best to make sure that I'm covering everything because, you know, sometimes you record these things and the episodes run together, so I'm going to do my best to make sure that, uh, you know, we're all good in that in that aspect. The uh, first place we're going to start, honestly, is where we always start. We're going to uh, declare our block, and we're just going to do, like we have in block, obsidian table. Just like so. We're going to copy that, and we're going to come down yonder. And this is going to be new, and it's actually going to be obsidian block, because this is something that we are going to um, do on our own. We're going to set block name, and uh, this will just be like we always been doing, obsidian block. And I'm also going to do set texture name. And I'm actually going to come back to this here in a second. Not in a second. In a while. Maybe next episode. We'll come back to this. And I'll kind of explain why. Um, so we've got that in there. Let's actually just get this block out of the way right here. And we're going to get this registered. You have to bear with me here. I'm going to be doing a lot of muting. So I got hay fever. I hate when you have a sneeze just like we're right there the whole time just waiting to sneak out. It's obnoxious. So we have everything for this block set up in our main modding class. Uh, what we'll go ahead and do now is we'll create this class for the obsidian block. And like is my want, we're going to put it under the blocks category. And normally we have our blocks extend blocks, but this time we're going to have it extend the block container. We're going to go ahead and import that. And we're going to add a constructor. Then we're going to add unimplemented methods. Um, I hate that. I don't like these. I don't like them get rid of that. Um, this is going to be much like any other super constructor for a block. We could say this.blockhardness equals 2.0 float, right? We can say this dot uh, set set resistance equals uh, 5.0 float. And you know what? This isn't actually block hardness. This is set hardness. I'm not sure what block hardness does. I'll have to uh, tinker with that and find out. Make a block and set that up. And then, of course, we're going to do this dot set creative tab. And it's just going to be the usual creative tab that we're using. Easy squeezy. Just like so. Now, if you hit the add unimplemented methods, you get this create new tile entity down here. And we're actually yeah, going to get rid of this to-do. 
and we are just going to go ahead and put return new Kyle entity obsidian block. Now I know what you're thinking. You're like, why? Why am I doing this? Do I need these? I think I need those. And then we create the class. Why am I creating another tile entity? Well, because you need a tile entity for this. I know that there are a lot of work. You, I think you'll particularly like this one because we're going to create it and it's already saved for us and we're going to close it. That's all we're going to do. That's all we going to do. That's it. All done. Pretty sweet, huh? Yeah, I mean, we're not all done, all done. We still have more work to do. Specifically, we need to do some work with uh, this bad boy, right? Um, what we are going to do is... What are we going to do? We're going to do some more stuff. We are going to say public int get render type. And what is this? Well, we're going to return minus one. And I'll kind of get into this here with you. If we actually go... Goodness, close all these up. Get rid of those. If we actually go down to our forge source, and we go to render, 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 renderer, and we say render blocks, there's actually a section in here, if we scroll, 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 big case statement, here we go, and it talks about how to render each of these individual things, like a block of quartz, render a torch, so case two, we've set our step to be case minus one, and the reason that we choose minus one is because we're pretty confident that minus one is never going to be used up here, right, we could go up to a hundred, but then you know, years down the road, we may have to come back and change that because they've filled it up with other stuff. Go Mojang. Really what we want to do is we want to ensure that we hit this default, right? This default render type. And really what that means, well, I don't know if it's necessarily what it means, but we are going to do our own rendering with all of this. Uh, next one is public boolean is opaque cube. You guys know what it means if it's opaque, right? It's see-through. Is that right? Is this block see-through? No. No. It's not see-through. Silly. We're going to have another Boolean statement. Statement method. Are we going to render this as a normal block? Well, the answer to that is no because this is a custom rendered block. So we are going to return false on that one. We're going to spell public right. And that actually takes care of our block class. This is all we have left to do. Um, that's it. Let's go ahead and save that. Let's save this. We shouldn't have any errors. We have some errors. Uh, get texture name. No, it doesn't like that because set block texture name and we're going to leave it blank. And this, it wants us, oh yes, we have to change this from protected to public. We'll save that and we'll save this and there we go. And like I said, we'll come back and we'll, we'll tune this up later. I kind of want to explain why this is important to tune this up. Um, so we're going to leave this blank for right now. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that this table actually gets rendered. Now, to make sure that that happens, what we have to do is we have to set up some proxies. So we're actually going to go up here and um, right here above our pre-init, we are going to say cited proxy client side equals net dot neocraft dot mod dot proxy dot client 
client proxy. Server side is going to equal, um, and we're going to do this. Boom. We're going to cheat him with cheaterson dot proxy dot common proxy. And then we're going to declare a variable, and that is going to be public static common proxy. And we're just going to call it uh, Neil Proxy. A lot of people just put proxy, but I want it to be mine, so there. It can really be whatever you want it to be. It doesn't really matter. I can't import this because I haven't created that. So what we are going to do is we're going to actually come up here back up to our stuff and we're going to create a new package and that package is going to be proxy and the reason it is going to be proxy is because that's where we specified that common proxy and client proxy are going to live so you got to make sure that this corresponds to where those where those classes are going to be and we're going to do new and this one is going to be client proxy like so. We're just going to save that and close it. And we're going to do another one. And this will be our common proxy. Like so. so we're going to save that. We'll save this. Let's import it. Still a bit more that we have to do though. Um, the common proxy is what's actually used to render things from the server side. Which is kind of why we have this right here. But a lot of the rendering actually takes place client side, so it doesn't it doesn't actually really matter, right? So really, what matters is that your your classes or your your methods in here equal what is in your client proxy. So we're going to create a couple of matching methods here. We're going to say public void register render things. We have things to render. And we're also going to say public void uh, register. We'll come back to this one later. Tile entity special render. Not entirely important that we have this method right now, but uh, we will be using it in later in our episodes on down C road. So common proxy. Let's open up our client proxy. Let's make sure that we have same stuff in here. Clean that up so that way they look good. We'll save that. One thing that we need to do in our client proxy is we need to make sure that it extends our common proxy. Voila. So we are good there. So we have our proxy set up. There's one thing that we actually need to do and we need to initialize those. So what we'll do is we'll go down into our Excuse me. We'll go down to the bottom of our pre-init here, and we are just going to say uh, renders, and we are going to say neo proxy dot register render things. And this method could be whatever you name it. You can name it register dog shit taco shell if you want to. It doesn't really matter, just as long as you're calling it correctly. And go away, kitty. LOL. Lots of love. Um, okay, so we've got our proxies done. We've got our main block class done. Let's get this model out of the way. Let's get that rolling. Um, so what we did was we had our model. It was up here on our desktop. I put mine right here. So I'm going to copy this like so. I'm going to come in and I'm actually going to create a new package called model. And I am going to stick this bad boy into that. We're going to copy, we're going to paste. And we got some errors. Some errors, but we're going to fix up the errors. So no worries. This is actually what gets dumped directly out of uh, Techni. Right, so we can clean up the stuff that he left for us. We'll need to change, of course, the package name to our package declaration, like so. 
then really a lot of these errors that we're seeing here can be fixed with Control shift o really what we need to do is just do our imports so select minecraft.entity.entity .entity and hit finish and we see a majority of those go away now there's some other things that we need to do in here and really that's just making sure that uh, we're rendering the right thing we have all these float points and a lot of them are direction and so on and so forth but we're not actually rendering the block itself so we're going to call that in as entity 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 and we're going to put a comma right there to be sure and we're going to come right here and we're going to put in entity and we're going to do the same thing up here for this set rotation angles because this right here is calling this method so let's make sure that those match up like so and we'll go ahead and save that now there's uh, one other method that we need to actually put in here and this one is actually pretty easy it's going to be public void render model and it's going to be uh, float f now what we're going to do is we're going to copy the shapes that we have uh, from our Techni model and you'll actually see if you look at this Right, these are each of the individual shapes that I created in Techni and what I named them. And this is kind of why it's important to name them differently. Because if I had left these all as I'm copying and pasted as shape one, shape two, when you get in here, it's gonna render shape two as shape two as shape two as shape two. So what might end up happening if you copy and pasted all of them, all your legs are just gonna be on one end of your table. You're gonna have a one legged table. It's gonna look weird. Um, so back to this render model, um, we're actually calling F, so we can just change each of these to F, like so. And that's good. That's good. Now, the thing is, is we're not actually calling this uh, model obsidian table anywhere. And we need to do that, right? We need to actually render that obsidian table. So we're actually going to create a new class over here. And this is going to be new package. And we're just going to call this render. And in here, we're going to create a new class called render obsidian table. Like so. So there's this package. The first thing that we need to do is we need to extend tile entity. Entity special renderer, right? Import, voila. Unimplemented methods, render tile entity at. This is a big one, so we'll kind of come back to this one here in a second. Uh, but what we want to do is we need to go and get our texture. Uh, but we have to not put the cart in front of the horse, and we have to actually declare this properly public static final resource location and we're just going to name it texture and that is going to be a new resource location neocraft dot mod ID now we're going to say plus and this guy whoop and plus and this is going to be under textures um, slash model slash obsidian table dot png like so voila control shift o to get our resource location import in there now we need to call this model right here we need to call this model into our render class here. So what we are going to say is private model nope, model render model obsidian table and we're just going to call it model like so and control shift O to get that obsidian table in here and what we're going to say is we're going to have a super constructor a super constructor, a constructor, or whatever they are. 
whatever they are. Render obsidian table. It's like a jingle. This dot model equals new model obsidian table. Like so. Like so. Now what we have to do down here is quite a bit of work. Uh, we got a double, 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 and we got a float, right? So what we're going to actually do is we're going to change these up because tile entity, um, we're just going to call that tile entity because we, at this point we, we have a pretty good idea of, of what a tile entity is. These are actually coordinates, so we're going to name those name those x, y, and z, and float will just name f. We'll get rid of this to do. So now we're going to get into OpenGL, and I will admit I am not strong on GL at all. I know that you open it with a push matrix and you close it with a push matrix or a pop matrix. GL pop matrix like so. And then we put our stuff in the middle. So we're actually going to have GL 1 1 dot GL trans uh, I like to hit the dot and make sure that I have these. Float X, Y, and Z. Pretty straightforward. We actually need to cast each one of these as a float. And with X, it's actually going to be plus 0 0.5 float. I have no idea why. I know that this works. That's pretty much it. Um, y is going to be plus 1.5 float. We're going to cast Z as float as well. Float. And Z is going to be plus 0 0.5 float. Next we are going to do GL11 dot GL rotate F and our angle will be 180 degrees and this will be 0 float and 0 float and one float like so then we will say this dot my favorite bind in the and in the darkness bind them texture we're going to bind texture we're going to um, do another one of these and this is going to be g l one one dot we're going to open up another one of these gl push matrix and here we're going to have this dot model dot render model and 0 0.0625 float. I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, that should be 1 16th of 1. Because uh, think of one float as being one block and there are 16 pixels in a block, right? Um, we need to close this. Dot GL pop matrix and that's good there um, let's just be sure 1 divided by 16 is that is correct so that takes care of our render obsidian table let's jump in and actually have a peek and see what this looks like and I'm pretty confident it's not going to work I like to say that because you know um, obsidian block. What is that? Obsidian block. Is that what I named it over here? Did I really? Obsidian table. Set block name. I did obsidian block. Obsidian table. That's okay. Uh, the big thing is, is let's see if we can put it down. Oh, we can! Look, and there's our table. We can stand on it. We can look at it. We can try to get around it. We can't. Good deal. Alright, folks, that concludes this episode. I hope you enjoy your custom rendered block. Just kidding. Just kidding. You know why it's not working? Because we didn't render anything in our proxies. So let's come back to this.
later. Um, that's Obsidian Table now. So we got to actually do some things in our proxy. Specifically, what we're going to do is we're going to name this and we're just going to say that this is our Obsidian Table that we're rendering. It's that way we know. At a glance, we're going to say tile entity special render render equals new render obsidian table we're going to do our control shift o to get those two bad boys in there And we are going to say client on the next line client registry dot bind dot bind special tile entity blah 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 blah. We need our class. So what is our class? Our class is tile entity obsidian table and it's a class file and our special renderer well we've already said what that is that is this guy right here like so and there is something it does not like about this and well, what is that create class we already have it. Did I spell it wrong? Obsidian table. Tile entity. Obsidian table. No. Do I have to manually bring that in? What is this telling me? Oh. Oh. We'll leave that as is. Don't worry about it. We'll come back and fix that error. Minecraft Forge Client dot register item render. Nope, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. You know why? Because I don't want to. Um, we need to do something else. And I'm trying to remember what that is. What is this error? Class extends tile entity. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I could always try to do this, but for some reason, my brain tells me that that is not going to work. Tile entity. Doesn't that, didn't we already do that? The tile entity? Tile Entity Obsidian Block. Good grief. Why did I do that? Oh, no way. No way. Obsidian Table. You guys probably caught that way back at the beginning, didn't you? Um, we're going to create that class. And we're going to put it in Tile Entity. And again, it doesn't matter because this is just going to sit empty. So that we're going to save. That will be right. We are going to come over here and we are going to delete that. And we are going to go to our client proxy and hey, look at that. It likes it. Obsidian block doesn't like that import because we're not using that. We deleted it. Okay. So now we've registered these things. What we want to do is we actually want to create our texture now. So um, kind of what we did was we have this texture 
and so let's just do this. We're going to create a new texture, 16 by 16. I'm going to blow it up, and we're going to say that it looks a bit like. Which my selection tool. We're going to grab this, like so. We're going to paste that right somewhere. We're going to come back here. We're going to get the legs. Like so. We're going to paste those in. And we're actually going to delete these out of the middle. And we're going to delete this. And we're going to delete this. Then we're going to select all of this. And we're going to move it down. Like so, there's our table. Sweet. We're actually going to save this under blocks, though, because this pertains to the block and not the actual rendered texture. Follow me. So we're going to go NeoCraft, Source, NeoCraft, Assets, NeoCraft, Textures, Blocks. And this will be Obsidian Table. Yes, let's replace it. Like so. Voila. Set block name. Set texture name. Let's run it and see what happens. Oh, we don't have it. We don't have it. You didn't see that. <laughs> That was for me testing. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's not really rendering. Oh, you know what? You know what? I have an idea why. I'm just all kinds of derps tonight. We need to do um, a new package. And this one is going to be named model, because that's where we put it silly. You guys are probably more on top of this than I am. We're going to copy this. We're going to paste it in. So there it is. And it didn't like this for some reason because that's not a block. Let's do it in the old-fashioned way. And by old-fashioned way, I mean like this. We'll just grab this bad boy out of here. And we'll put that in here. There we go. Um, now let's try it. Hey, there's my table. Place it down. Look at that. Beautifully rendered. Now you see the table, when I hold it in my hand, it looks a little cheesy. It looks just like some kind of tool. It doesn't really render right in my hands. And we don't like that, right? We don't like that one bit. Um, what we actually want to do is we're going to want to set one of these down here and one of these right here. And we'll come back and kind of compare those later. So let's make sure this this item in hand, let's get that tuned up so in that way that looks sweet. To do that, we need another class, and it's actually going to be in our renderer package. And this one is going to be item render obsidian table, like so. Lots of stuff to do in here. Um, this is going to implement I item render uh, control shift O add unimplemented methods. Um, what we need to do is we actually need to put a constructor in here first, so let's do that. And we are going to say public item render obsidian table 
um, and we're going to say tile entity special renderer render and we need a tile entity so we'll say tile entity and this is going to equal entity like so control shift O get those bad boys in there and what we're going to say is oh we got to do this first private let's bring in um, tile entity and we're just going to call it uh, entity as well and here we're going to say tile entity ah, you know what, do this copy paste and this will be render as well and then here we're going to make it easy, we're just going to say this dot entity equals entity we're going to say this dot render equals render um, these bad boys these two classes are easy um, we want to return true on them and then we have a render item so this is where we're going to put in put in some work we're going to say if the type which is the item render type so if if type equals i item render dot item render type dot entity we want to say something like gl11 dot gl translate translate f and this will be minus 0 0.5 float, 0, 0.0 float, minus 0 0.5 float. And we are going to import GL. There we go. And we will say this dot render dot render tile into the at. And it will be this dot tile. No. This dot entity and it will be 0, 0.0 double 0, 0.0 double 0, 0.0 double and 0, 0.0 float and you'll remember that we had a method right here double 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 float tile entity double 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 float so we're actually calling this one right here sweet huh now we need to actually tell everything to render this so we're going to actually come back up in here and we are going to um, in our client proxy this is where we are going to say minecraft forge client dot register item render and that item will be item dot item dot get item from block and that will be our neocraft dot block obsidian table like so and this will be a new item render obsidian table comma and uh, not comma parentheses we're going to say render new tile entity obsidian table one of those and we're going to close this up at the end and we should, we're, we're missing some things here well we're missing an import so let's get that import in there but we're missing some of these, yeah we actually need three of those to close this up properly there we go, boom let's see how that renders in hand now I bet you it's going to be beautiful I bet you you need to paypal me five cents if I'm wrong oh, oh Ooh, ooh, chills. So now you see that it actually renders a little bit more pretty in our hand. It actually looks like the table that we're placing down, which is sweet. One last thing before we wrap up. You'll notice that the hitbox for our custom table here is off. It's actually bigger than what it is. 
and I put this this ore next to it because if we kind of get down here on the level you'll see there's one two three four pixels off right it's four pixels off of what it should be so what we are going to do is we are going to head back to our right here and we're going to say this dot set block bounds we got a whole bunch of floats in here so really what this is is your first three 0f 0f uh, what did I do oh wow um, is zero float because this is your min x min y min z these are your max max x max y max z so we know that our z axis which is our left or right our table fills that whole thing we know that our z axis which is back and towards us fits our whole thing so each of these are going to be one float because as i was kind of saying one float equals one block however this one doesn't it's missing four right so um if we go 1 divided by 16, is that times 4, 0.25. So really, what does that mean? What do we put here? We put 0.75 float. That really means that we are going to render 3 quarters of the pixels in that for the hitbox. And kind of what we'll do to um, illustrate this is, we'll, again, we'll say 1 divided by 16, but we're going to multiply it times 3, and then minus 1. So we're actually going to put um, 8125, and I'll kind of illustrate what this looks like here. Because it's kind of tough to explain, but when we actually come in here and look at it, it makes a lot more sense. So now we look at our hitbox, and you'll see that our hitbox is actually one pixel above. So we brought it down three pixels. Well, there's 16 pixels altogether. We're only using 12. There's four left over. We know that 12 is 75% of 16. So really 0.75 is what we would want to render this as. So we will say 0.75 float. We'll save that. And we're probably going to have to reload, but let's do that. I guess debug won't work for that. Voila, hitbox fits. And you'll actually see how dark the edge is right here along the side, right along that angle. And when I move off of it, it's a lot lighter. So you can see that the hitbox is actually snug perfectly with that. So there you have it. That is our custom render block. I did it in one episode, and it's still 40 minutes long. That's okay. You guys can break it up. But that's it. Custom rendered block right there for you. Obsidian table. If you want some help rendering some of yours, go to the forums, uh, neogaming.com slash forums. Or if you just go to neogaming.com, there's a link there that says go to the forums. If you need any help, questions on code, don't hesitate to post it. I check it every day. I check it like every 10 minutes because nobody's been there yet. So I'm kind of anxious. Kind of anxious. So yeah. Don't hesitate to go there. Put your code in. Like, comment, subscribe. Love you guys. LOL. And I will see you later for our next episode. Whatever that is. Bye-bye.